Having a perfect life is something each and every one of us wants to achieve. But does anyone in this world really have the perfect life? People have been asking this question after Susan Day claimed that her life never saw a simple failure or scandal. But is she really telling the truth? Continue watching this video to find out. How did Susan become so famous? Lori Partridge was the complete package. She had it all, the beauty, the brains, and the musical talent. She was the inspiration for many girls. But the thing was that she wasn't real. In fact, Lori was Susan Day's real-life alter ego. This character was one of Susan's most unforgettable roles she ever played on television. But what has happened to this actress after appearing in The Partridge Family? Well, it all started when Susan thought of starting a career as a model. With such a gorgeous face, it certainly comes to no surprise that she was immediately accepted into modeling. Susan then climbed her way up to the top, eventually landing the role of Lori Partridge when she was 17 years old. The show ended up being so successful, it ran on ABC television for a total of four seasons. In addition to its massive success, the fictional family also had several musical chart toppers, including the 1970s biggest hit song, I Think I Love You. To Susan, becoming instantly famous upon the release of the show was all very exciting and new to her, even though she never had any acting experience before. But did you know that Susan almost didn't get the role? Surprisingly, the producers of the show had already planned out who they wanted to cast as Laurie Partridge, and that was an Australian singer and actress. But then something really strange happened. We will catch on to this story a bit later in this video. In the show, Lori also knew how to play the piano. However, Susan herself had no clue on how to use the instrument, so she had no other choice but to ask the show to provide her with piano lessons so that she could perform more realistically and at some point in the future actually play the piano herself. Sadly, the showrunners weren't that nice and generous and denied not only her request to get piano lessons but didn't give all the other actors lessons either. The actors in the show were mostly cast for their attractive appearance and good acting skills and none were really cast for their musicianship, which is kind of odd. In fact, in the first ever episode of The Partridge Family, David Cassidy is not really singing. He is actually lip-syncing to someone else's vocals. Susan had a short-lived romance with David. For a brief period, Susan and David did have something that included more than a friendship going on between them but they didn't last long and broke up out of nowhere, not giving their fans a proper explanation. When David finally released his autobiography several years later, he finally confessed why the pair ended things between them. David revealed that his relationship with Susan was doomed from the very beginning. The reason why it was like this was that he saw Susan more like his sister rather than a girlfriend. The thought of even kissing her on the lips disgusted him, as it simply just didn't feel right. And even though he did realize that Susan was a rare, natural beauty, he just didn't see that in her. Many are still left confused at David for this, as anyone would have loved to trade shoes with him and become Susan's boyfriend. Susan's Second Success Although it is not a highly rated movie, Looker, written and directed by Michael Crichton, was a pretty good movie during the 80s. The movie starts with Albert Finney, James Coburn, and the highly mesmerizing Susan Day. Before this role, Susan had also appeared in Sandy and Grease. These films were quite the rage back then, so it comes to no surprise that Susan was seen as the it girl all across the world. Okay, so remember when we mentioned an Australian actress almost taking her role as Laurie? Well, the young girl at the time was Olivia Newton-John. The reason Susan got the role instead of her was that Olivia refused to be part of the show. She thought that it was not worth the effort, as she didn't think that the show would become as popular as it became. 
Soon after appearing in Looker, Susan appeared in another popular show titled L.A. Law. She acted on the series from 1986 to 1992, portraying Grace Ben Owen. The show lasted for a total of six seasons, and during this time, she was nominated for an Emmy Award three times and a Golden Globe six times for her amazing acting and performance on the show. And in 1988, Susan finally won the award. The Downfall of Susan's Career Susan's final appearance on screen was around 2004, when she acted in two episodes of Third Watch as a character named Dr. Breen. She decided it was time to live a different kind of life, something away from the fast pace of the entertainment industry. In 1988, Susan married for a second time, this time to television producer Bernard Safronsky. Susan and Bernard settled in a lovely little northern Catskills community in the state of New York, where she has become involved in many of the cultural and civic elements of the area, but we will get on that in a bit. Susan has also served as a board member of the Women's Treatment Center at the UCLA Medical Center. Her involvement with the center has been something that she feels very strongly about. In fact, Susan is so passionate about helping victims of abuse and other heinous crimes that she co narrated a documentary on campus assault on women with her former L.A. Law co-star Corbin Burnson. Okay, so let's go back to Susan's cultural and civic involvement in New York. There are many videos of Susan on the internet where she talks about a Battle of the Bands competition that she was helping to promote, as well as get monetary support. From the videos, it is clear to say that she is such a positive inspiration for the community she lives in, and all the people that know her in upstate New York are truly lucky to have her. Even though she was promoting a cultural event, Susan also spent quite a bit of time talking about the community as a whole and the deep sense of connectedness she she feels to that area. In one of the videos taken on the subject, we see Susan being interviewed and asked if she ever misses acting and if she would ever think about coming out of retirement and doing it again. And surprisingly, the former actress didn't say no. In fact, she said she would love to act again, but only if the role offered to her was a really good or inspiring one that would send a strong message to viewers who would watch the movie. In the end, she still stood her ground and revealed that she loved what she is dealing with at the moment, which is making a good impact on her community. Susan certainly seems happy with the choices and content she has made throughout her life. From the way she has lived, we can clearly see that she lives with no regrets and has been nothing short of picture perfect. During her career, Susan has also appeared in two other movies she made with John Ruder back in the 80s, titled Sunset Limousine and The Comeback Kid. What are your thoughts on Susan Day? Do you really believe her life was as perfect as she says? Or has she always hidden something from us? Let us know in the comments. If you liked this video, give us a thumbs up, and be sure to check out the next video in this series.